So hi everyone, thank you for being here. My name is Yasmina Salib, and I am the program coordinator for the Refugee and Immigrant Support Group Program at JFCS. Um, today we'll be hearing from individuals who are support group leaders in the Refugee and Immigrant Support Group Program. This program started in 2015 and is primarily funded through the Allegheny County Department of Human Services. And in the support group program, um, we at JFCS work with bilingual individuals in various refugee and immigrant communities to help them as they start their own weekly support groups. Um, the program is based on the understanding of peer support and community strengths as really key to becoming more comfortable and knowledgeable about living in a new country. So I'll just briefly um, introduce the speakers we have today and then we can get started. Um, so we have Prahlad Mishra from the Bhutanese community and Prahlad arrived in the United States in 2009 as a refugee and now works as a manager at Candid Home Care. Um, next we have Hanifa from the Ugandan community. Hanifa came to the United States in 2015 on a visitor visa and then got student status to attend graduate school at Pitt. Hanifa works as a global health associate at the Jewish Healthcare Foundation. And we have Nurulhaq Fazli from the Afghan community who came to the United States in 2016 as a special immigrant visa or SIV holder and currently works at JFCS as an employment specialist. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm looking forward to hearing from each of you. And I want to give each panelist a few minutes to introduce themselves, speak about their journey to the US, um, the experience of living in a new country, and how they first um, had the idea to start a support group. So let's start with Prahlad. Hello, everyone. Namaste. Uh, my name is Prahlad Misra. Uh, I am originally from Bhutan, a tiny Himalayan country between India and China. Uh, I came to the United States in 2009. I was resettled first in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and then I moved to Akron, Ohio in 2012, mid of 2012. I stayed there for a year and then moved to Pittsburgh in June of 2013. Mm. When I started this uh, support group, actually, like uh, I was an employee at ZFCS when uh, I started this uh, support group, uh, I started as a support group leader. Uh, I um, like the program. Uh, I talked with Yasmina and that uh, my interest of being as one of the leaders because I thought this program gonna help a lot uh, to the immigrant and refugee communities because uh, people can get sense to uh, express their feeling in the group, share ideas, uh, and learn more about uh, the mainstream culture uh, and mm, the way of uh, like assimilation into the mainstream. So I am still running the program. Thank you, Prahlad. Um, let's move to Hanifa. Thank you so much, Yasmina and uh, JFCS for putting together this event. And I welcome everyone who is able to join us this yeah. afternoon. My name again is Hanifa Nachiriwa, and I came from Uganda, as uh, Yasmina just pointed. I'm, I'm from the Ugandan community. And uh, when I first came to the US, I entered the US through California for surgery. So I came in as a medical visitor, but eventually I gained student status. So I moved back east here to start graduate school with my two daughters, who were then four and eight. <laughs> So being a full-time grad student and a full-time single mom in a new country was, was a, a complex dynamic. So for me, it, it was really important to have a support network around me, balancing between school and parenting and getting familiarized with my new community and the new culture. That's the reason I was out there looking for my community, my fellow Ugandans that I, that I could relate with who had been here longer and um, who could help me understand how they managed to navigate through the system 
although it was quite different because they didn't come as parents like I did, but it was really helpful for me to know that I have fellow Ugandans in the Pittsburgh region and not just fellow Ugandans, but generally people in Pittsburgh are welcoming. I found a community that is welcoming and supportive here in Pittsburgh and that's why I love it here. Thank you, Hanifa. Um, and now we'll go to Fosley. Hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm my camera doesn't work to be on, so I hope you hear me well. Um, this is uh, Nurul Haq Fazli, originally from Afghanistan. I came in US 2016, as Yasmina said, as part of SIV or Special Immigrant Visa. And uh, I think when I came in the uh, US, there were few Afghan families in Pittsburgh, not more than. 10 families, including those all Afghan, they were here for a long time. So in 2018, we have uh, at least 20, 25 families They came in Pittsburgh from Afghanistan. And then because I had a connection with JFCS in that time, and I, we decided to have an, a small meeting with all this Afghan community to share um, what we learned, my experience, and also to learn from them and to find out about resources available in Pittsburgh for new families. And that's happened. We establish our community and people like it. and They learn a lot from this community. So we will continue our meeting and we have somehow, but not in regular basis at this time. And uh, this is, uh, all about our community. I think Zermina, she is here. She is going to also talk about her experience of in a, our community. Thank you. Thank you. So I just like to ask a few questions and, and just hear from everyone. Um, when you first heard you were coming to Pittsburgh or decided to come to Pittsburgh, what did you think life would be like when you moved here? Can I answer it? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Pittsburgh was not my first destination in the United States. So as I stated before, uh, I was resettled in uh, Phoenix in 2009. At that time, the economy of the United States was not too good and there were not too many jobs available there. there. So I was looking for a way uh, or the area where I can uh, get uh, like a better job. Also, uh, my uh, interest was in like a kind of uh, business type thing, uh, even though my background was physics. So it's like totally uh, uh, contradictory thing, like a physics student, like uh, interested in business. So, but uh, we moved to uh, Akron where we established a business around for a year. And um, at that time, like, um, I don't know why my interest uh, in business was down after a year. And so I, instead I decided, okay, no, let me change the course. And my friend at the time uh, was here. Uh, he was uh, uh, working with uh, NAMS, uh, a resettlement agency in Salzburg. So he called me and said like, okay, come here. Like uh, uh, we, the community is getting bigger. Like at that time, uh, most people from like Western uh, part of the country, like and uh, central, uh, Midwest, they were moving towards East where uh, there were uh, so jobs opening in uh, Pittsburgh and other areas. So uh, because of that, uh, once the community is growing, we'll have more like, uh, uh, you know, opportunity to, uh, to start something. So he, he says, okay, come here. So I visited a couple of times before I moved to Pittsburgh. Uh, I found like our community, like Nepalese speaking people, uh, they were growing. So I thought, okay, in future we can do something. So uh, I moved to uh, Pittsburgh in 2013, like in June. Uh, firstly, uh, because in search of like better job. Secondly, uh, because of the community, because growing community. So uh, I started uh, first as a uh, bilingual uh, interpreter, a language interpreter uh, with uh, names. And then when this Isaac program started, I uh, joined as a bilingual navigator and then moved to 
a service coordinator where I worked for like around six, seven years. I'll, and later, finally, uh, in 2018, I joined the FCS when NAMS, you know, um, stuff reset and reset. So that's the journey, like, uh, for me, why I moved to, uh, like, you know, this work. the reason behind it is, uh, as I stated before, one is community, another is looking for job. Thanks, Prahlad. Well, um, I'll go. When I, I didn't know what to expect when I was coming to Pittsburgh. To be honest, it was scary thinking about it. It was very scary coming to a new place, a new country, a new community with my two kids who were literally babies that time and going straight to school and have them settled into school in a new country. I didn't know where to start from. But I remember when I first came to Pittsburgh and um, I was trying to look for an apartment and getting myself situated if I could get my kids, one person who I met in the community brought me to JFCS. I was still on a B1, B2 visa. I still remember that so vividly because it was a very important turning point in my life. I didn't know anything about JFCS. And I remember I came to JFCS the first time and um, my first exp uh, at that time, I was on a visitor visa. I wasn't an immigrant yet. So I was just a visitor in the United States. So I didn't even fit into the narrative of what JFC, the kind of people JFCS serves. But I still remember the director of the immigrant and refugee services at JFCS at that time looked at my case, my situation, and she assigned me a caseworker. And that caseworker worked with me to help me get myself established in the Pittsburgh region as I got myself ready to start school and bring my kids with me. So that welcoming gesture meant a lot to me. It set the stage for me to know that I was in a safe community where I could have my kids and feel secure. I've been stuck in Squirrel Hill simply because of that, because I have found this small Squirrel Hill community to be welcoming, to be um, willing to help when I need help. They they make me feel at home. I, I always say Pittsburgh is my home away from home uh, because when I compare the two, when I compare Pittsburgh to Los Angeles, Los Angeles is beautiful because I come from an, a, a tropical country that is all year round sunny and you know, Los Angeles would be a perfect place for me to be. But coming to Pittsburgh and the way it is still very strongly family oriented was really very important for me. And that's something that I really carry very dearly at my heart. Thank you, Hanifa. Let me uh, say my experience, that why I choose Pittsburgh. Uh, while I was in Afghanistan, I decided to go to California. That was my final decision. And because I work at the embassy, one day there was a presentation about Pittsburgh. A Pittsburgh are giving a presentation about Pittsburgh. Then I attended and that was only last, last one week before my flight to US. That's why my first time I heard about Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then it seems very cool to me. Oh, Pittsburgh, let's go. I did some research uh, immediately and then I emailed to IOM, I asked them to, I changed my city from California to Pittsburgh. And they told me they cannot guarantee because it's too late, it's a last minute decision, but they will try. Two, three nights before my flight, I received an email and they said, okay, your destination has been changed to Pittsburgh. And I came to Pittsburgh, I only had one friend in Pittsburgh that who came here in 2000, 15. I called him that I'm coming to Pittsburgh and he said, but then, yeah, it's a good city. It's not a big city. It's not in a small city. And there is a good thing and bad thing. The city is long winter, cold, it's too much hilly. It's not flat roads. And, but there are some good things about that. It's not very expensive city. I said, okay, as far as it's not expensive, it's good. I came in Pittsburgh and uh, then 
in the first few months of my arrival, I did some travel around the US. I went to Virginia, Maryland, Arizona, California, New York to see if I can move to a better city. When I went all this city and checked, I thought that Pittsburgh is a good city. I, I can't live in New York. I can't live in uh, Virginia. They were very expensive, very crowded, and they have limited option of opportunity for kids and for women. This is my personal impression was. Then I decided to ascend Pittsburgh and then slowly, gradually, I like it. And I make connection with this community in Pittsburgh. I met friends. And uh, now I feel that I've, I was born in Pittsburgh. So to me, in my personal idea, Pittsburgh is a good city for starting new life. And then when everything is done in terms of education or training and work, then you can change the city. So I have a good experience. I have uh, good memories from Pittsburgh when I came here. So the organization helped me to settle was NAMS, which is not anymore functioning. And um, then there's some bad Pittsburgh community helped me. I mean, advised me, I made connection. It's a welcoming city. This is my personal experience. Thank you. Thank you, Fosley. Um, so now I'd like to hear about your experience of being a support group leader. What has that experience been like for you? So, okay, okay, I'll answer it. Uh, I was working uh, as a service coordinator uh, while I started uh, this support group uh, myself uh, because uh, when I was a service coordinator, I realized that, you know, uh, people should come forward, express uh, their feeling, uh, talk among themselves, and the solution is there if they have some problem. So uh, I was uh, aware of that thing and uh, I knew this support group would, uh, would provide that platform to people because if they start uh, expressing their uh, you know views, if they talk about their problem, uh, the other member in the uh, like group uh, has a solution. And so if they uh, start talking uh, among themselves, uh, they they can uh, be a good support to each other, and. The, uh, and if they have some other problem, then we can connect them to the resources. And if they express themselves, they will be relieved from their mental health st stresses and other uh, things. And in the group, there will be a lot of like activities. So people will engage, especially for those like who are not uh, able to go outside, uh, travel, like uh, uh, doesn't have like means of transportation, uh, they can, um, it's a, like a meeting place for them. They can like meet in a group, express their feeling, uh, be friend, make new friends. So I like uh, the you know structure or the like you know empowerment uh, the group gives to the um, group members. So um, I I thought like this is the right place where I should start. With. Thanks, Prahlad. Yeah. Um... I can go next and share my experience with my support group. Um, like I said in the beginning, when I first came here as a graduate student full-time and parent full-time with young kids, it was quite challenging. But when, um, God bless her, that uh, Leslie, Leslie asked me, Hanifa, don't you have a Ugandan community in Pittsburgh? And I told her, well, I, there are some, but we are scattered. And she's like, have you thought about bringing them together? And for us, the pandemic was a, like it was the, the trigger for us. Like everyone was scattered, everyone was isolated in their homes and everything. And everyone was just by themselves. Others were struggling, others had lo lost their jobs, others were being evicted out of their houses. 
And so it was really a wonderful, a great time for us to convene and form a support group. So our support group started virtually because we could not meet in person. Our experience has been so different. We had a WhatsApp group that always brought us together. We would share, exchange ideas and stuff like that and tell people we are here, somebody's here, add somebody. But to have a, an, a, a structured support group where we know we meet on such a day every after such a long time at this time for this long and we have ideas to talk about and engage in a productive conversation it has been a great experience for us because we have fellow Ugandans that have lived in the Pittsburgh region for over 10 years others over 15 years others some are up to 20 years they have lived in Pittsburgh and we didn't know about them so their experience of Pittsburgh is an asset to us as a Ugandan community and they help us understand how to go through it. because every Ugandan who is here came here for a purpose while we have some who came here as refugees, most of the Ugandans came here to, to, to seek greener pastures, like, like our Afghani brother said, and also like Pralad just mentioned that he came here for better opportunity. Most of the Ugandans came to the Pittsburgh region for first of all, because of the lower cost of living and greater opportunity. <laughs> so they have better experience that they could share. And for me, being a leader for the Ugandan community, it has helped us see more opportunities and resources that we can tap into as a community. I struggled as a mom by myself and I didn't know how to approach different ideas or different how to reach out for different resources but through this community we have been able to share ideas we have been able to think of even broader picture a broader picture of what our support group could look like how do we leverage our position here in Pittsburgh to amplify the asset Pittsburgh is to the Ugandan community across America and uh, so to us, that has been an asset. There is no way we could come to that kind of structured arrangement without the support group. It has been great. We have learned a lot. We have got um, presenters from JFCS. Yasmina has brought together different people who come to educate us on different things that we do not understand. We have tried to organize and made great strides in our community. And that has been really great. That's my experience. And we are also trying to promote our culture, which is very important to our kids who are growing up here for our children, because most of the Ugandans came here as single individuals. Now they have families. So for our kids to know that they have a community here to understand our culture is really important to us. And we are able to do that through the support group. Thank you, Hanifa. We lost Fosley. Um, so I will wait to see if any of the um, attendees have any questions. But while we're waiting for, for those, um, I'd like to ask what changes um, have you seen in your community since you started these groups or in these groups? Um, what, what kind of changes have you seen? Okay, I'll answer it. Uh, since I started the group, uh, what I have uh, seen in the members of my group is that like they started uh, opening up, they started expressing their feeling uh, before uh, they were hesitant uh, to hesitant to uh, talk uh, they were always uh, you know um, in dilemma whether uh, their views uh, you know uh, will be listened or not but when they realize that okay uh, well, until they speak uh, uh, no one will understand what's going on so they slowly started opening they uh, when i run group with like senior like uh, uh, citizens they Mm, often talk about their you know uh, childhood uh, things uh, memories some uh, even uh, played their uh, you know um, some kind of traditional uh, flute and other type of uh, instruments they used to do uh, play like childhood they used to uh, they sang those songs uh, where you know uh, they remember from their uh, childhood uh, they, they they were happy they were started talking about their 
the memories of back home uh, they i could even uh, see from their facial expression that you know they are uh, like happy uh, then you know, because they were expressing uh, their uh, you know memories uh, they 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 went back to their childhood uh, they talked about uh, how they uh, their you know um, life used to be in back home and in the group we used to have like people of different ages so uh, the other people uh, like youths and other they were curious they were they started asking questions and the elderly people they uh, they were you know um, expressing their feeling and we could uh, there was like you know uh, definitely a shift in culture and everything we could like realize that uh, and people could uh, ac uh, even acknowledge like you know the changes in life and like uh, it was like a great experience and i saw a lot of changes in uh, people's like thinking as well as uh, they learn how to use zoom and like uh, facebook messenger be uh, because of this pandemic uh, uh, being in the group because uh, they wanted to join the group some people they used to wait for like you know uh, half an hour or an hour uh, before the zoom like uh, meeting started they used to call and say hey, uh, what time will you start like i'm uh, eager to be in group so those type of things like people used to come forward uh, and that's the like you know thing uh, i like most in this group thanks for a lot so i have a question from the audience um, what is your favorite place in Pittsburgh? I can go first on that one. I love Freak Park. Walking in that trail, and, and the reason I do is it takes me back home uh, because I come from a woody country. We have woods everywhere. We have forests. We have those rainforests and everything. So for me to take a walk, a reflective walk in the Freak Park really help uh, takes me back home, takes me back to the roots. I'm able, especially during the summer, I'm able to see some weeds <laughs> that I see back home. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> when I first came to America, that's something I was looking at, something so simple like that, but means a lot <laughs> to me. I would look at the weeds, I'm like, all the weeds in this country are so different. <laughs> Until I walked in Freak Park, especially during the summer, and I see some familiar weeds, that really means a lot to me. So that's my favorite place. It helps me reflect and refresh. Thanks for sharing that, Hanifa. That's so, so interesting that I, yeah, never thought about the different kinds of weeds. <laughs> so I can go with this question. That is, uh, how could this work be more welcoming to your community or immigrants in general? Uh, First of all, uh, Pittsburgh is already a welcoming city, so uh, there is no doubt, uh, no second opinion on this one. But how we can make more welcoming is like you know, uh, during the course of my like you know, uh, stay over here, what I realize is uh, some, not all, uh, like some people here, uh, they don't have like you know much knowledge about the geography and uh, the culture of other continents sometimes i even heard of like do you speak asian or like african you know the people they uh, even don't know like these are not languages so if we could uh, as a community like as a uh, organization or ourselves as a, a community member make other people those uh, ignorant people uh, make know that like you know uh, these are the immigrants communities in this region they come from this uh, area here is their background uh, people move here because of this this reason and they find peaceful uh, like uh, a better place uh, so if we could make uh, that knowledge available to all like grass, grassroots level people uh, then uh, it would be more welcoming than what it is now. Thanks, Pilad. Yeah, so if I can add um, my one cent to how we can make 
Pittsburgh more welcoming to our communities is um, it takes us back to the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I usually say not one size fits all. Yes, I can be an immigrant. Pralad is an immigrant. Jermina is an immigrant. But we come from different backgrounds. So um, we can't all be lumped in one basket. I come from a different cultural background, and so are my other colleagues from other countries. Um, and um, sometimes I say it's unfortunate that when we get here, we are sometimes put cornered in a way that we have to behave American. You know, we have to meet the American standards. But sometimes when I'll give an example if, of myself, if I'm expected to meet an American standard, maybe I am bringing in my best standard in my cultural context <laughs> in the American setting. So how am I being embraced with my uniqueness for me to feel welcomed in my new community with my cultural richness that I bring with me, you know, instead of expecting me to get acculturated? Why don't I get, why, why am I not celebrated? for who I am and where I come from, instead of being expected to level up to meet the American standard. Yes, I could be an American citizen, but I can never adopt the American culture. And that's what makes the United States unique. Everyone comes from a certain background somewhere from their ancestors. And I think if we could, we could feel that our unique cultures and our unique backgrounds are embraced the way they are, and we are not expected to meet the status quo according to American standards. That uniqueness is, is, is an asset to this region, you know, that richness. It's like you look at the colors of the rainbow. They all bring a special blend into the spectrum. So I think the different cultural diversities bring in a unique blend in the Pittsburgh fabric. And I think there is, there is a lot to be done in that area in terms of making us feel welcome in our uniqueness. Thanks, Anifa. That was really beautiful. I think that's so important to, to recognize that, how important it is to be proud of where you're from and able to be respected for that and welcomed. So thank you. So we're coming up on the end of time and I just wanna give all of the speakers a chance to share any last thoughts or, or things that they think um, would be important to know about, about their experiences. Okay, I will, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing us together and uh, also I'll thank the FCS uh, for um, continued uh, for their continued support uh, towards the refugee and immigrant uh, communities and city county and state as a whole being a protective layer uh, for us in especially uh, during the past administration where we needed uh, the most like you know uh, like uh, support uh, and I found Pittsburgh county and a state as a whole behind us uh, especially uh, protecting us uh, as if um, I, uh, like you know we and I feel like proud to be in Pittsburgh because of those support we we had from JFCS uh, and those uh, three layers I mentioned. Yeah, thank you so much, Prahlad, for pointing out that. That's exactly what I was thinking about. You know, when I when Yasmina reached out about welcoming Pittsburgh and asking if I was willing to share my experience as an immigrant in this region, I thought that was a great initiative. Like the intention behind it is really so powerful and strong that it makes us appreciate being here to begin with. It makes us appreciate the initiative that you're taking, that the region is taking, that the state of Pennsylvania is taking, that America is taking, this one being welcoming month, to make sure that as immigrants, we feel welcome and we feel at home in this region and that our voices can be heard. Those are really great efforts and we really do appreciate that. Thank you. 
It means a lot to us, especially to our kids who are growing up in this kind of environment. Thank you. Thank you, Hanifa. And thank you all for, for being here today. Um, it's really great to hear from everyone and I'm happy that we will, were able to listen to your stories and learn from you. Um, and I wanna thank all of the attendees for coming as well and for taking the time to hear from our neighbors in Pittsburgh. So thank you everyone. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.